new fuel. So, so, this, is, so this is a gas and yeah. this is their new phase. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason we is for our hands right now is yeah. because they just got the new half and it's a self and it's on the new now, it's painting up. It looks like it made a friend of the past to make the map. Right. Uh, now it's just for me. The impressive thing about that little machine is it actually goes under the table. Yeah, so it's small. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Gaussian Phantas, which is a uh, all-in-one machine. It will scrub, sweep. It does all the, it does it all, and it also um, self maps, which is very innovative. And as you just saw, it went under a table, which most robots usually don't do that. But uh, the size is perfect for. Uh, at office buildings and stuff. So it's a pretty cool little robot. Tell us, tell us about the 75. So um, the 75 is our biggest uh, scrubber dryer. Yeah. We have uh, a cleaning width of 75 centimeters and we have pad, br pad brushes on the front. We have a 270 degree turnable front deck. Oh, well, that's sweet. I remember that turning in uh, so it's very, very so it's zero, like a zero turn. And it's, and it's easy to, to turn as well, yeah? because we have some support. Some support. We have pet brushes on the front, so we have um, two in the back, one on the front. And then we have, as well, in the back, we have uh, roller brushes for, for heavier debris as well. Now, does that just agitate or does it like put stuff into a hopper? Does it like sweep to a hopper? We have a hopper in here, okay. a hopper tray. Um, the, the good thing about this machine is we have a filtration system, a water filtration system. So we are recycling the water and we have also a working station. So a working and a charging station. Working station, the machine is cleaning autonomously. If the water, the fresh water, is empty, the dirty water is full, or the battery is, is low, the machine goes back automatically. It drives backwards to the to the working station, charges the battery, empties the dirty water, and at the same time, refilling fresh water. So it's all doing that. How does it refill this? It just goes into this. Yeah, there's there's an arm. And it runs backwards. Oh, an arm. And the, the okay. arm is just pushing it open okay. and uh, releasing the the fresh water. This is the parking version of um, the 75. So we have additional sensors and cameras and lights as well on the machine. So we have some millimeter wave sensors. So we are detecting even from a forklift the, the forks when they are on the ground. Okay. So okay. this no one else can do at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yes, no, no, it's, yeah. it's really, really sensitive. What well, distance is that? Four inches? Um, no, it's no forklift. About like that. Okay, three and a half. So it's it's not really, really high. Uh, an inch and a half, maybe. Inch and a half? Yeah. yeah. And um, that's, yeah, in, that's extremely impressive. Right. And well, we're doing everything in-house. So uh, manufacturing, uh, we have our R&D um, yeah. in-house. We have 550 um, um, developers and engineers. 550. 550. So we are really improving and improving. And we are also launching new updates and new products uh, very frequently. Wilson. Wilson. Hi. How are you? Hey, Wilson. Hi. Good to see you. How are you, yeah, Richard? Uh, this is, this is, uh, this is Lion's Bar. Our cyber code. That's how you do it. <laughs> but it still has to be easy for you guys. Yeah, that's right. It's not real. Actually, putting your life in. It's the hundreds of robots in <laughs> two short of car. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm sitting at home, man. I'm just downloading stuff. Now this is Lionbot. So the model number is what on this? R3? R3 Scrub. R3 Scrub.
in a mat and then it just cleans. Uh, you can do it in manual mode, pick up uh, the green. Uh, you can ask it to move to different points of interest like uh, lobbies and... Uh, oh, so you set up different maps and so uh, Yeah, right. And then you could just do a just clean where we can just do a barometer mode on it. And fill, right? Yes, correct. Or, or we can do a, like a teaching sort of method. Yeah. All right. Now, so that's, that's sort of uh, when you walk the, the robot, it, it, learns, it learns what you're walking, right? Yes, correct. And, and then, uh, well, now, now it's still downloading, but uh, we actually have videos to show like uh, how, oh, how it works. Yes, yes, you're right. And, and um, so all, all the reports, everything is uh, it, it's very clear. Uh, so like we have blue ticks on, on dates that you are working. So, so if you just click on it, and then we can see the different cleaning uh, like reports, we can go in. So it shows you the map of where it clean? Yes, correct. The, the whole heat map, and, and then um, how, the efficiency, how, how it works, what mode it's working on. All right, so it's super easy, but it's not just on the robot. Robot has an app, all right, and so one app can control multiple robots. And then we also have our dashboard. All information goes there, and from there you can see your whole fleet of robots and how they are working. All right, now next thing uh, in terms of user experience is also how we design the robot. So we are talking about huge capacity. Number one, this is twenty-one liters. The other competitors are ten liters. All right, and then um, is that wastewater or clean water? Wastewater. So. Um, you, you can see like a large debris tray, all right. Uh, the whole thing is yeah. uh, a debris tray, and then um, you have two uh, uh, electric floats and also a ball float in case of foam. Yeah. And uh, your hands can reach inside to clean easily, all right. So on top of that, if you see the rear, um, anyone who is used in auto scrubber would be able to figure it out. So you can see over here. This is the wastewater to control. This is the squeegee suction tube. You pop out water here. And we can also do auto docking station. So, so over there you can see the auto docking station where you can charge, you can refill the clean water, you can dump the wastewater. It'll do it itself or you need to Automatic. Do it? Automatically. Yeah. I mean if you can install the docking right, station. Right, right. I mean you must have the right place. Some, some place. Yeah. And then on top of that, we are talking about much bigger capacities. Um, so we are having like a seven gallons uh, uh, clean water and wastewater tanks. Um, and the liner is 25 meters. And we use stainless steel inside here. So how is that? As a real built machine. No. Nice fish. Well, 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 I've seen this before. Try carrying this. It's good for weightlifting. Wow. Good stuff, right? So this, this is what's in there, huh? Yeah. So this is stainless steel. Try this. Good stuff. Right? <laughs> yeah, good, good. Yeah, good. <laughs> And then, so this is a stainless steel uh, base, so it weighs down the whole robot and, and it so doesn't vibrate. It puts pressure on, on the, yeah. the and, and also, this is a brush that is also made of stainless steel, so if you pick up salt, chemicals, no problem. It won't, it won't, it won't right. sort of rot it out, right? Of course. And then because you'll have that, that with the salt, right? Uh, it will on, start to corrode. Yeah. On top of that, let me show. Uh, it's very easy to remove the hopper. Because it has a cylindrical brush to pick up debris, and you can also pick up the side brushes. Oh, that's quickly All right, and so there's only one way to go in. You can't go wrong. Okay, so what happens is we just go in, and then put it together. And the side. In that sense, so super easy. Now, the third piece of stainless steel is the handle because um, being a scrubber, it may be wet and dirty, so this is sanitizing. Yeah, so easy to use, compact, but tough. Solid, yeah. tough. Yeah. So, this is the R3. It's our smallest robot. We have a system product coming out that just does vacuuming. And the Rex over there, that is a 37 gallon machine. So 37 gallons fresh water tank, 37 gallons clean uh, dirty water tank. And Warehouse and parking lot, yes. and parking garage. That is 32 inches dish brushes. The other one is a 45 inch because of two side brushes. And cylindrical, uh, two cylindrical, and you have a pressure of 120 pounds. Yeah, so running time is crazy. That gives you eight hours of normal running. Eight hours? Yes, really? and eco mode, 10 hours. This has a... Uh, three hour running time for scrubbing and seven hours for dust mopping. What, what is the production rate? Is? Oh, how, um, how much area can it cover? Average cleaning uh, efficiency. I talk about average, okay? So we are looking at between 4,000 square feet to 8,000 square feet per hour.
this a realistic coverage yeah, in a sense. That's that will give you uh, 15,000 to 25,000 square feet per hour. That's good. Yes. Okay. And it's super easy to use. Right. Five cm from the squeegee to the wall. Yeah. Five inches. Cm centimeter. So it's uh, okay. two inches. Three and two inches. Yeah. Yeah. In it's not bad. And everything is made in Singapore. Top quality. It's gonna build the last. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't see that very often. That's a battery swap right there. And like, if, like you guys have a tool to swap out that. Uh, yeah, they, they just got, yeah, it's not very, it's not very common. So we have like two safety locks on each side. That's to prevent it from coming out. And once you pull out, you have to pull this lever. We focus mostly on eight to twelve schools. Uh -huh. Schools is a very good option because you can see in the video we did. As a cool little feature that you can customize that. Um, that little display anytime you want. This is one of the hardest tests for a robot is trying to run during a, a trade show. That uh, robot that I'm trying to video, I could get up right up on it, but that is a Poodoo robot and it is uh from pringle robotics and it is a uh, disinfection robot you can see the mist coming out of the top of it it's got excellent navigation abilities back in the day there's no way our robots would have ever run that smooth around this many people Just steadily running its route, a little L-shaped route. I don't know if it's showing up in the video, but you can see the mist coming out of it at the top. But uh, the, the doctor can do a, a 9,000 square feet in, in, in one running. It usually takes one or two passes, uh, 10 ounces of fluid. And then you fill the rest up with with your you know your standard water, and uh, we, end, we end up getting on eight hour charge. We get three days. Uh, Where does it, this run? Uh, we run it in OSF uh, Children's Hospital, Matino Matino Fetus. Uh, we also run it in like uh, the areas where break rooms, uh, things like that. Uh, it, it's also really good to run in like the dietary areas, break room areas, stuff like that. Um, it being a cross site base, and there, we're running water in there right now, and it, 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 it won't hurt you, won't dry your eyes out, yeah. or anything like that. Uh, with the with the UV, yeah. it kills 99. We're also partnering with the University of Illinois right now, and they are running samples of every known. I'm doing all this. And you're like, hey, Rick. We're running samples. We'll take a look at some more robots in a little while. If you guys want to come on over, I'll show you this. So this is Iscobotics? Yeah. Now, do you guys make this machine? Yeah, so we do everything from the ground up on this machine, so we're super excited about that. Uh, have you guys seen Wiz or our yeah, other yeah. robots? So, so, yeah, so Wiz, um, you know, Brain OS is the operating system on there. I'm sure you guys do a ton of stuff with Brain. So we've learned a lot, you know, through that, and we're able to make our own navigation system on here, our own lithium-ion batteries in there. Uh, and we built the scrubber from the ground up. We've been building scrubbers for you know over a decade, and that's it's got to be a good scrubber, right? So, scrubber first, robot second, right? Um, as it boots up here, it's all QR code based, as you guys know, right? A lot of it's based off of that, so you get six routes per code. Um, 
and split it up obviously into you know, manageable chunks or routes that we, that we want to put it into. Lithium ion battery right here. So there's that. We just recommend leaving that on all the time on your batteries. It's not interchangeable like Wiz, for example. So it's a different one to just plug it right into the wall. Why aren't they doing that anymore? I love the interchangeable stuff. Yeah, I think it's just a little bit more manageable with the scrubber. There's, there's a water involved now, right? So it just keeps it a little bit uh, more manageable in that case. What are you getting for runtime on that battery? Runtime on the battery? About an hour, hour and a half to two hours. Okay. So um, we might end up taking this one. Is that safe because you opened that? Yeah. It's a sensor? Yeah. So I'll have to reboot this guy. Yeah. So it's is it well, I, I shut it down. Okay. Yeah, we'll reboot it here in a second. We'll run this other guy. Um, Let's go here. This is where it parks. Right here is a uh, home market. Pretty cool little robot from Ice Robotics. Or I'm sorry, Ice Cobotics. Back again. Um, looks like Asia is making a big splash in the robotic market here in the United States with more than just a, uh, a cleaning robot. Here is a, uh, let me flip this around, robotic uh, lawnmower. This company is called Deep Blue. Never heard of them before. More to come later. So it, it's like waterproof. Yeah, yeah, It's really industrial. Does that go outside? Yeah. Well, like if we do that for a gas station, people like a cigarette plug. <laughs> yeah, sure. So yeah, this this robot is actually built for professional cleaning on offices. So it looks like the one that you see at home. I know yeah, this is it does, uh, yeah. is unique, but there's a reason why is this is shaped in size. Firstly, it's small. It's able to go under tables and chairs. Yep. So if you look at the cleaning robots that are out there, they say that we are for office cleaning. They're huge. They're bigger than this unit right yeah. here. So these are the ones that can go under tables, can go on chairs, they can go on hot ground and on carpet. So when it actually goes on carpet, it has real sensors that actually can sense that I'm on carpet right now and I need to increase the suction level. So that means that you don't have to worry too much between uh, you know, humans will understand this, yes, carpet, we're going to push harder. This one knows that I need to suck harder, I need to do a harder suction. Um, it's smart, it has a 360 LiDAR system, ultrasonic sensors on the side, it has bumper sensors, depth sensors to make sure it does not go over any stairs. Um, it also has the wheel sensors I mentioned for to see the difference between hard carpet and hard ground. Um, they have no cameras, no microphones, so it's very good for security. Uh, cleaning, especially cleaning services, they do come in in the middle of the night. Uh, we don't want them taking a look at, for example, your, your sensitive uh, topics. Um, this is the ideal machine for that. Once it's done cleaning, it, firstly, it does mapping. Secondly, it also comes back to the docking station and it gets, this docking station is not just for charging, it actually is a suction. So there's a dust bag in there that collects all the dust. So this dust that has been collected, like the shark, probably looking at uh, maybe about a month or even a week, one, or one week to a month, depending on how dirty the room is, probably then you come and change. When the dust bag is full, they'll let you know. It's all in the status updates here. So, I can show you an example of a current machine that this is actually in Singapore right now, um, live. So what we have is, uh, I'll give you this example, you, let's say you have three robots in here or you have hundreds of robots, no issue, it all runs the same way. This app was built for clean management, it does not, uh, it does not allow you to run uh, let's say one robot, I mean, it allows you to run one, one robot, but it's an overkill because you can actually have hundreds of them running. You can have one. hundreds of these. Yes, hundreds of these. That's the whole idea because it's small, yeah. yeah so, so when you actually open this, for example, you can have a map is drawn the moment
when it starts running. So we so do its first clean, and so it will clean. draw the map as it is. It goes back um, so once the map is drawn, the 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 done, is done cleaning, it comes back, it so auto generates the map and the zoning as well. So it realizes that I'm actually in a different room. I don't have to. Uh, I don't have to say that. Okay, I want to split this room, and this is different. I can uh, have it already set for you. But if they did not realize it, what I can do is I can split the room if I want to, or I can merge the room together and consider it as one cleaning area. The reason for this is because we can do area cleaning. We can have cleaners coming in and say, I would like you to clean this room only. Because, for example, the door was closed at the time, but you did not manage to clean the room. So when I come in, I just say, I want you to clean this room. Or this area, we can draw a box as well. Yeah. So if you have brought this particular robot out, how long is it? Four hours. Yeah, so for our four hour run time and it runs uh, 3,000 square feet. 3,000 square feet. Yeah. So uh, the red boxes you see, those are no-go areas. 3,000 square feet in four hours? Yes. Uh, so you have the, the no-go areas, which are the red boxes, and the boxes, and the boss will never cross those lines. So uh, if you decide to bring the robot to a different room, the uh, and that room itself was actually uh, not mapped before, you can actually uh, you can actually first, uh, you will actually reset the map and start mapping again. But if you brought it back to this room and you realize I got to do all these boxes again, you know, but no worries, we have a history setting for this. So once you have gotten to the history settings, it goes back and look back at all the maps it has done before, which you can then really That's nice. That's a nice feature. With the, 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 the no go areas and all join it together. So this needs to start it from the same starting position and it will run again. Yes. Um, you can also rotate the map. Uh, in most cases, yeah, some that. people, yeah, some people actually. This was actually requested from uh, our dealers, some of the dealers around the world, and then we added them in. So we're actually this software is totally ours. So we have, we have to how access. many? How many of these have you sold? Um, in the market right now, uh, because we have dealers around the world right now, we have four thousand two hundred. Wow! Yes. And then how many in the U.S.? Today's, uh, today's the second day we we'll start selling it. <laughs> yes, we actually entered the market. In the US. Yeah, in the US. Yeah. Yeah. So we have uh, 400 over units right, that right now going over to Memphis. We'll be ready to call. 400, 400 over units is coming yeah, in. Yeah, they ship it to me. Yeah, they ship it all the way ship here. Ship it to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good job, man. coming to my warehouse, yeah. We had 30 that came in, uh, coming from Memphis that came over. It was supposed to be here ready for you to pick up. It got stolen. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. It's oh, really? Yeah, it got stolen. <laughs> so how much is the retail? Because I've got to watch my time. Uh, retail, it's uh, usually about 1,000 usually per, per unit. Uh, right now, we have a promotion going on, one, two, one, two, for two. Yep, so means you have two units. Two. Uh, one, two, one, two, for two. For two robots. Today only. Yes, today only. Oh, yeah. It's only at yeah. SSA. Yep. One, two, one, two, today only. Yeah, yeah. show right. price. Yes, it's show price. So when uh, it comes with the year's license as well. So we have a subscription license that comes with, uh, it's about 150 USD per bot, uh, per year. Yeah. So uh, it also use unlimited user accounts. So it means that you can unlimited. have many different, unlimited. Can you, can you talk, can you look at the robots? Obviously you're looking at this in Singapore. Yes. So I can watch my 100 robots working anywhere in the world? Anywhere in the world. So right now this is live in Singapore through your phone, Android, iPhone, and your website. So well. if I have a building, Yep. And I have a 10 story building and I have 1,000 robots. I'll show you one. Uh, you show me one? I have right. one which has currently a pharmaceutical company right now. Yep. They have 130 or 150 robots. They started with uh, iRoombas, which we work with as yep. well. Uh, and then they actually moved on to they're getting the, uh, another 100 of these robots as well. Don't show off too much. <laughs> Yeah. You said don't show off too much. Huh? <laughs> but yeah, this is the one that's going on right now. 150 over robots, all mostly are all green right now. They're all ready to go. Yeah, so we'll be able to check that. Seven. Why did you yeah. call it Roomba I7? Uh, this was uh, initially we started with the iRoombas. Um, and then now we actually move on to our own robots because we ah, thought okay. that this is much better. And this clean yeah. it. Yes. You manufacture this where? We manufacture uh, it's it's in Switzerland. Yes, Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah. Well, let me, I'll explain that just a minute. It certainly is a beautiful machine. Thank you. It's, it's beautiful. It really looks like a robot. <laughs> I think it looks like Jordan Bateman. This is a Kimaro. Yes. K900. Oh, yeah. 
Hi, my name is Tom. I'm Richard. Tom, how are you doing? Hey, nice meeting you. Yeah, so welcome to the zoo. We have a red one and turkey one and blue one and a little one is in this queue. Yeah. I think I'm going to talk to you last year. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you tell us about this? Yeah, this is a we just got uh, from Switzerland and we tried to uh, launch it towards to this winter or maybe early next year. Next year? Uh, yeah. So basically... It's a sweeper? It's, yeah, it's a sweeper. Just a second. Let me get the Hi there. Hi. Doing fine. Good job, sir. No problem. So basically, it's just a sweeper and, uh, you know, you just to go for the warehouse and go underneath and you got a three different types. The RC, remote control. All right? The remote control, you just use the regular remote control like a radio control car remote control that's what a hundred percent man there's no smart function there's no sensors okay so you'll hit it okay then you go to the echo mode and then our uh smart mode then uh, you're gonna get all these uh you know flavors and uh is it self dumping no no Here. you gotta dump it oh uh, okay oh wow did yeah. they pick those things up? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, beer bottles and... Nice. Yeah. So basically, this is the dump. And the filter is right here, underneath. So, so it, they will return the clean clean air back to the... Uh, so is it autonomous? So it goes yeah. on a schedule? Yes. If you go to the smart functions. Okay, as Let a me schedule. show you that. Yeah. yeah. Let me show you the video. Come on, buddy. Hey, we're here at the uh, second day of ISSA. We're excited about this day. We're gonna see, show some more robots and we're tour around and try to get inside and see what we can find out. We'll see you there. From side to side, to deep clean edges of the walls. That's a great question. So the, the robot itself, uh, yes. we have systems in the future. It's like an iPhone if you think about it. As OTA updates, it's constantly being improved. There's new features being added all the time. Um, but currently, what you would need to do is have somebody that's pressing the play button. Um, and the battery lasts for about an hour and a half and covers about 3,000 square feet. If the battery dies in between runs, like I just saw a replace battery notification, I just grab a new battery. Grabbing the battery, install it into the device, and then it'll keep on cleaning where it left off. So if you put it into a large hallway, 5,700 square feet, over three batteries, it'll clean that entire area in about four hours. So are you are you guys working on developing a start stop to someone to tell what the timer uh, someone having it to start it? Yeah, having somebody able, uh, able to start the robot is, is essential right now in its current form. Uh, in the future, we're looking for every opportunity to improve the product and we take feedback into that consideration. So is that a requirement for small? How long? Our intended use, yes, right now it is. Because again, it's, it's going to be nice to have somebody who's in there at night and start with I want to be able to just put a program like your Roomba you have at home where you set a timer and everyone else and then returns back to the store. So I have, a, I have a, an idea I want to share. So we're very successful in hospitality. About these two. Tell me about them. All right, so on the left you have the SC50 and on the right is the SC60. The SC60, the one that you're looking at right now, actually uses the Brain OS. And the other one over here, the SC50, that uses the Carnegie See, Robotics buddy. operating system. Both of them are incredible pieces of equipment. Um, some of my favorites. Look at our, our YouTube channel for a detailed group, uh, study that is 50. Alright. So this is Coco Cocoa Bus. Cocoa Bus. This is our first time here, so you get them to make it. Beautiful design. Yeah. I, I think we will uh, okay. have a great That's time. That's okay, no problem. No problem. Hi. Okay, mama. So this is a scrub. Yeah. 
They had this Fuji in front with the little dust mark on the back. It's full of time because they had this charger in there. You can see the charger. It's a workstation, but it's a charger. So this is, uh, this is Buzz Wilkie, he's with uh, Lucid Drone Technologies. This is the drone. All right, go ahead. Yeah, um, basically, you know, this is our, our C1 spraying drone, uh, basically designed to help those folks that are in the exterior cleaning world, so whether it be windows, uh, exterior uh, facades, uh, things like that. Uh, has a 160 pounds of thrust coming off the ground. Uh, the FAA regulates it can go about 110 feet. The drone can handle a lot more. Uh, operates off of two batteries here that you can see on top. Um, about a 15 to 20 minute flight time, depending on um, you know, the conditions. There's a lot of variables. Uh, we do include a, um, a, a quick charge battery charger that charges these two in about 30 to 40 minutes. So most of our customers are doing that. Uh, about four to five cents batteries. This is the FPV camera. That's where uh, most of what you're going to see on the screen here. This is the controller. Um, you can obviously control your spray from the controller as well as um, landing, landing, it, landing it in auto mode. This is a uh, forward facing uh, obstacle avoidance radar, so you can't get any closer than nine feet to a building. Um, so you can disable that if you want, but we never can it. They'll be crashing into That's right. glass windows. Exactly. Especially the way I do it. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you.